Hey, 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 it's Grips, and as always, thanks for joining me again. There you go. All right, so you saw the intro, and that's right, we are going to be reviewing Video Studio X9. Hey. So let's have a look at the new features that X9 has to offer. Okay, multicam, that's a big one. We've been asking this for quite a while. They've listened and they finally gave us multicam editing. So let's have a quick look at how multicam editing works in X9. So I've got a couple of clips here in my project. I'm gonna highlight it all. I've got one audio and then I've got a fork track. So once I have everything selected, I have a new icon here which says multicam editor. I clicked once and there you go. So everything's been imported now into a new window for multicam editing. If you got the pro version, you're gonna get six, uh, four cameras. If you have the ultimate version, you can use six cameras. So let's have a look at how well it actually syncs everything up. So we have three ways to do this. You have audio marker and shooting date. So we're gonna use the audio, which is probably the preferred method to do this. Now, what we're going to do here is use this little icon and then it will sync everything up. Now, I've already done this uh, for a demo just to practice. So I know for a fact that this track here, uh, it will be out of sync because the audio file, as you can see, or the wave file is really, really small. So it's going to struggle to pick this one up. If I sync it and it does not pick it up, it deletes the track. So what we're going to do is tell the multicam editor not to sync this audio clip. I will do this manually. So let's see how good it can do in lining up all my clips. So as you can see, I've got a spike here at the beginning. And this is why I did the hand claps so that I can sync up my audio. So let's go. So it's analyzing. It does a relatively quick job at this. So obviously if you've got really long clips, it's gonna take longer, but that's to be expected. So let's see how, how well it does by syncing up my audio. There you go, well there you go, it was pretty quick. So you can see this clip uh, I told not to do, so let's un uncheck that. And this one is out, so that means it couldn't quite do this, but have no fear, we can enlarge or zoom in on the clip so we can really see where the, uh, the wave file is. So we're just gonna grab here. So it's very simple, just line this up and then just drag it and then line it up here. So now that's in line and the same thing here. Drag it and line it up. So now all my clips are perfectly synced. And if I start moving my scrabble or press play, you can see that as the timeline comes on, all the cameras, all the uh, different angles of the cameras are gonna come into view. So here I'm about to do the hand clip, which is this spike that you see here. And then from here I can start just saying, well, this is the clip I want, this is the clip I want. So. It looks like I might be looking in camera one. So as you can see now here on multicam, this is the actual timeline. I have now camera one selected. If I, you can press play or use the scrubber, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna use the scrubber, it, it all works out the same. So I'm, I'm going along nicely, looks like I'm making a party drink. So apparently here I'm, I'm walking away from the, this camera here, so I might switch over to four, see what's going on here. Yep, see, I'm getting some ice for the protein drink putting it in and I'm coming back. So I might go back to camera one and then just keep moving. So this is how, just how easy it is to use this multicam editor. Now you, you have so much power inside this as well. If I did make a mistake, I can right click and then choose the different camera if I want. If I wanted the clip to be longer, I can then edit it shorter, longer, this way or this way. There's so much power at your fingertips here for multicam editing. All right, now let's say you have finished the complete project because I'm not gonna do this whole thing for you. I'll do that on another tutorial just to tell you how everything works. And then I'm gonna press okay. And you'll see a new uh, clip comes up, VSP. Click and drag, pop it in there, and everything is done for you. You've got the one audio track, which is saw that as the dominant audio track. You can import multiple audio tracks if you want, but we're not gonna do that today. And then let's have a quick look at that. All right, today I'm going to show you how to make a protein drink. It's quite simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, grab some ice. So there you go. You did it quite uh, easy and we did it quite quickly. So that is probably the biggest thing that we have happened to Video Studio X9. And as you, as you may agree, it is worthwhile waiting for it. We've been waiting for a while so that they finally listened. 
Right, so FX filters. What FX filters did we gain in version nine? Well, we got the new Blue Video Essentials 7. So here we are, we have it open already. And I'm gonna show you exactly what some of these do. I'm not gonna go through every one of these, but I'll show you some of these. Now, one that stands out quite well is the Gradient Fill Pro. I had a play with this, I really like this one. So let's apply that. And it just, it says, it does what it says. It's a gradient, so let's have a look what it does. Okay, so let's say I wanna change the photo uh, in my timeline from red, uh, I don't know, green, so okay, and then blend mode it, so I might go into multiply, so here we go. So here is the uh, picture that I have in the timeline, and its original color was obviously uh, gray and black, and I was able to change that color any way I want, so this is kinda, kinda neat, I can disable just this secondary color, make the entire red, or I can play around how I want the colors to come across. So, and again, I'll show you a full tutorial on how to use this, but I'm just demonstrating one of the new FX filters that is available in this package. All right, I'm gonna get rid of this uh, footage and I'm gonna bring in a video clip so I can show you a couple more of the other filters. This one here will do. Let's go back to the uh, filters. All right, now there's a, there's a couple in here. Um, I know for sure you, nobody's ever gonna use these legal level it has more to do with uh when you go broadcasting live on tv and again i don't i doubt many people ever use this one uh region scopes this is purely designed so you can see what your rgbs are doing your wave format and your vector scopes for color grading it can be handy if you know how to use it if you don't know how to color grade then it's a filter that probably is never going to be used but for those who are learning to color grade you now have that option to see how your colors your specters are oh, let's have a quick look why not, right? <laughs> so already I can see. So you can fine tune certain areas like, I'm doing it off there. You can, you can fine tune certain areas and see what detail you can, in, you know, if you're missing detail because it's clipping, can you enhance it and whatnot. So it, this is purely uh, just so you can see what your colors are doing. It's nothing else. So it's a, just a tool to help you do more or better with your colors. Okay, let's get out of that. Video pan and zoom. We have now they give us auto pan. It's just a really quick little uh, filter that we can use. Uh, sorry about that. I have two monitors, so it keeps popping on the second one. And it just gives you presets and how you want to bring in your picture. Uh, ease in, ease out. So you can see what it's going to do on the timeline. It works real quick, very easy. You'll still have all the controls on how you want to manipulate this. Well, yes, I know we have a video pan and zoom. And again, it just gives you more options to work with. Uh, panning and zooming on your project. Let's get rid of this one. Flying picture in picture. Now you're gonna say, but we already have this. Yes, this is picture in picture plus. So again, we'll go into the custom settings. I'll bring it into the screen and here it is. And here you can see more presets and whatnot. And some of these are pretty cool. Let's have a look at this one. So it just drops and rotates and does whatever it wants. So yeah, it's neat. So you got presets you can instantly apply get your workflow going much faster. And again, you can still manually adjust everything you want to suit whatever you need. All right, so let's get out of that one. And let's have a look at one more. Okay, well, quick pixelator is exactly that. You can choose an area to pixelate and whatnot. But uh, I like this one here, Video Tune Up Plus. So we'll go in here. Okay, so this is a pretty good color corrector as well. It can really, you can really look into your, your blacks and your whites. If you're losing a lot of detail, your eye can see more detail in black than it can in white. So you can manipulate it so your eye can see a little bit more in the white than black and so forth. So uh, it gives you an example here. So now I've gone everything to black, but if I can also brighten it like so forth. And I did find a nice neat one here, um, brighten here. And I really like that. It gives you more of a bleach look. Uh, I like this style. It was very simple. I just used one of the presets to create a different look to my video. And that's what the video tune-up does. It really works with your contrasts. And that's pretty neat. Okay. Like I said, I'm not going to go through every one of these. These are detail enhancers. You, either, you can detail by chroma or you can detail by luma. Uh, it, it, it does exactly what it says. It just enhances certain details in your photos. But all of these, I will obviously do a tutorial to teach you how to use these properly. All right, multi-point tracking. What is it? Let's have a quick look. So I'm gonna highlight my clip. 
go into track motion and now we have a new feature here and let me highlight the track first and it, this is the multi-point tracker so before we virtually had just one tracking area or we just had a tracking point so now we have an ability to use four points to track something so sometimes it could be very difficult that we're trying to track other times it, the, the shape that we want to track is not uh, a square all right so if i'm trying to hide the garbage can in this clip I can do that by doing whatever shape I want. In this case, uh, in this case, a rectangle. So I'll have a quick look at that. So I'm going to record the track, and then let's see how that works. So you can see how some how you can use this in advantages in case you have a shape that's I don't know, a triangle rather than using a square and, and covering too much. Okay, so there you go. Let's come up to the right. So. That is what they mean by multi-point tracking. And obviously, if you go along the timeline here, you can see one of the track points is moving. So you can easily go back into the uh, track motion and it just manually adjust that point. Other than that, that's pretty neat. So now we have the ability to create custom shapes with multi-point tracking. Okay, so what do they mean by audio enhancement. Well, for starters, if I go into the effects uh, icon here, I now have a separate icon up top here, which is the audio filters. So before when we had the audio filters, we need to either put a, put basically a music track or a soundtrack here. Let's do that for a second. I'll split the audio. And then from here, I can access the audio filters like so. But what they did is just made it a little bit easier. You can just drag and drop straight onto the track, the same thing audio filter, it just allows you to work a little bit quicker in your workflow and anything that they, it allows you to work faster for me is an improvement. But there is something else that they did which is quite good. I'm just going to go back, uh, step back. They giving you another what they call audio normalization. So what is that? Okay, let's grab two clips. Okay, now let's say for instance uh, you've recorded two clips at once but the audio in one is really, really high and the audio in the other is really, really low. So when you play the video, uh, all of a sudden your volume goes up and the volume goes down. It's really, really annoying for the listeners. So what they've done here is if you highlight both clips at the same time, right click, you now have normalize audio and you'll see that it's processing it. So it's gonna bring the low volume up and the high volume down. So it's basically level all the way across. So that's pretty cool if you ask me. So you don't have to worry about having different volumes on different clips. So that's another added feature. And one more other feature they have here I'm going to split the audio again, split my audio and obviously we are aware of audio ducking and what they've done here is just added something really cool or just a little bit to help you more attack and decay. So that's lead in and lead out. So you now have more control of when the audio goes down, how long and how short it goes up and down. And again, you've got a little bit more control at your fingertips rather than let the program do all the work for you and you're getting frustrated going, you know, I wish it was just, you know, it leads out a little bit slower than that or comes in a little bit faster than that. So that is what the audio enhancement is in Video Studio X9. Fast Flick Template. Okay, let's have a look at that. Now, uh, previously in version 8, if we went to File, Export as Template, we can just uh, save it as an Instant Project Template. So then when we went into the Instant Project, it would come underneath here as Customs but we can never use that one also in the fast flick. So now we have the ability to do exactly that. So we can create it here by going fast flick temple designer, go through the instructions. It tells you very simply what it does. Now, once you've followed all the instructions, uh, you can then go back into here, say file, export. Now you're here, now you'll see here fast flick template. So let's click on that, uh, save the current, yes, whatever. So I'm just gonna do desktop and I'm gonna press test for the time being, press save. So, uh, yes, so you, you can choose your category. So I'm going to choose, say, uh, comics, press OK. So now this will add a new, oh, thank you. This will add a new category here. But what it also does, if I go into Fast Flick, I'll just launch Fast Flick quickly. All right, so we're in Fast Flick. And if I go in here, now I see the new comics here as well. And voila, there's my project. So. It allowed me not only just to make the, the, the instant project within Video Studio, I can now also access it through uh, Corel FastFlick. So that's pretty cool. 
Okay, last but not least, let's have a look at some of the additional features, and that's format and performance. So quite straight away, I've noticed something here. MXF, so for those who don't know what that is, it's basically like AVI, MOV. It's a wrapper for the XEVIC codes. So these are all the 4K formats coming out. And according to Video 9 or uh, Pro X9, you can now import them directly and it supports it without any problems. So that's pretty good news if you're using 4K already. And also now it, uh, it is optimized for the sixth generation Intel Core i7. So if you've got one of those new i7 chips, well, it's compatible with that. So you're gonna use the full functionality of that, which basically means what it says here that when sh that it, the MPEG-4 and MOV files will play much better, faster, smoother. According to them, it will be 10 tracks that you can play simultaneously without any loss of quality compared to version eight where it says three. Well, I guess somebody will have to put that to the test. All right, let's just go quickly back into Corel Video Studio. And there's one more thing that I wanna point out that if you go into the track manager now, if you look in the music here, we get eight tracks compared to four. So there you go, we give to, we get an extra four music tracks for all those music lovers out there who've been complaining that it's not enough. Well, there you go, you got plenty to go with. So that's an overall overview of Video Studio Pro X9. I'm pretty sure I've probably left out a few little details here and there. If I have, leave it in the comment sections below once you have it. Other than that, I think multicam editing is probably the biggest feature that they've added in a long time. And as always, thanks for watching.